get back here to fight for another world title and got choked out again. It uh Yeah, I'm just heartbroken man. Yeah, understood. Uh, I know you had a lot of respect for him coming in and you knew the skills that he had, but in there, um, did anything that his aggression, uh, I don't know, anything surprise you? His durability. He wasn't crazy strong. I knew his obviously I knew his jujitsu was the best, some of the best. I mean, most submissions in the UFC history coming into this fight. That's kind of the reason I didn't go crazy trying to sweep and get up uh, that second round. Because I, I figured, like I said, leading into this, I'd rather lose the round than, than get my back and lose the fight trying to scramble back up. But he ended up getting to my back regardless of that. You know, guy's good, man. He's the champ. Yeah. It's round three, obviously, you got your back very quickly, I guess. Was it just surprised and how quick? Or? Yeah, he kind of, I, I mean, I knew he was going to start trying to creep around with the body lock. I wanted to keep a wizard, but he got around me. Uh, I felt like at first he was really high, and I thought he was going to slide off. And then he kind of sunk in and, and really got his position. And he started kind of a neck crank. I pulled his hands down once, and it's just his forearm slipped under my chin. And once he tucked it, there wasn't a hand for me to grab to, to really pull it down. It's just, you know, you, you same thing with Khabib, you know, it's, it's such a small room for error in these, in these kind of fights. I felt good, you know, after, after the first round sitting on my stool, going into the second, I, I drinking water and, and thinking I'm going to be the world champion tonight. You know, I, it's, it's, just such, so it's such a crazy thing that we do. I know how much it's meant to you, but I mean, you've seen the fan support that you have. I mean, you've become one of the most beloved fighters in the sport. You put together a heck of a body of work. I mean, as you sit there at night, I know you're disappointed, but can you be satisfied with, with where you stand in the sport? Like I've been saying all week, nothing this whole journey was done in vain. Everything me and my family have is because of fighting. Um, and the, you know, I didn't, a lot of education in my life is through these kind of moments, learning about myself. It's... You know, it just sucks. I uh, I really worked hard and sacrificed a lot and put myself in the position I thought that I was going to be the world champion. And I knew I was going to either come out here tonight and be the world champion or fail daring greatly. And sometimes, you know, this is what happens. Last thing for me, I know family time is probably what's most important to you now, but do you start letting yourself ponder about the future? I mean, is this just like, let's just keep chasing this 155, or does this maybe this open the door? You know, you've always talked about maybe a little welterweight. Does this say, well, maybe now's the time to do that? What's, what do you think the plan is at this point? I think there's fights at 55 and welterweight still for me. I just don't even want to think about who or what's next. It's been a crazy, crazy year for me, three big fights. I just go home with my family. Um, I'm healthy. They're healthy. Like I said, man, I'm not a stranger to, to this kind of position. You know, nobody wants to be used to losing, but I'm just used to of, of learning. And it is what it is. That's the fight game, you know. I'm trying not to sit up here at another press conference and cry in front of you guys. But I'm gonna continue to do what I do: be a father, try to be a beacon of light, keep grinding. Dustin, Dustin, I can you? comment on the body shots. Did Charles wear you down a little bit? You know, you were landing some good strikes in the first round. He seemed to be going to your body a lot. Was that impacting you at all? He landed one good knee uh, to the right side of my body, but uh, nothing like really that, that hurt me or took anything out of me. And then last question for me, um, you know, you made a lot of money this year, you sold a lot of pay-per-views. Do you consider it a good year given the wins over Connor, the money it made, or does losing tonight ruin the year? It, it ruins the dream outcome that I had planned to forever be a world champion after tonight. But whether I was on, you know, nah, it, it, nothing, it, the, the year isn't, is it ruined. It's just an opportunity I had. Opportunity I had is ruined. And, and it's all right, you know, that's, that's, that's what it is. I, I, I'll look in the mirror like a man. And immediately after the fight, you, you know, showed us your great character again by offering Charles a donation to you know, charity of his choice. Was that something that you had planned on doing, win or lose, to say to him? Or can you just tell us your mindset to do that you know, moments after the result? Yeah, I saw a video this week of him showing uh, you know, where he grew up and where his mom cooked dinner for him. I don't know if it was, I think it was an old video um, See, and saw some of the, the sights of where he grew up and just how little they had, and it came to me this week, I, I, 
thought I was going to let him know, win, lose, or draw, talk to him after and let him know that me and the, uh, the Good Fight Foundation would donate $20,000 to this his city in Brazil and put the money to wherever they think it needs to be. Obviously, he, he knows he's a good guy and he knows where the money will go the furthest, so that's what we're going to do. And like I said, man, continue to try to do good and that's it. Be a better person every day. For sure. Dustin right here. Uh, right here. Um, obviously, right before your fight, your teammate Amanda Nunes suffers an historic upset. Just, I know you were obviously busy in the back. You're getting ready to go, but did that have any effect? Did you have any of that emotion as you were walking out for your own match? No. <clears throat> I was, I was upset for her while I was warming up. I saw that she lost. But I've been doing this a long time, and I knew it was. Her had losing had nothing to do with what's about to happen with me. I can I can separate these things. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, Joe Rowe was making a lot. It looked like he had hooked your glove when you were trying to pull your arm away. It looked like Charles maybe kind of hooked into the glove to pull back, which would have been a legal move. Whenever I did the front roll, uh, like right before second round. Yeah, when you tried to pull it. Mike Brown was asking me when we got back to the locker room why I didn't just slide my arm out. I don't know. I don't remember the finger in the gloves, but I was trying to pull my arm out and it felt like it was in there good. But Mike did ask me in the locker room after why didn't I just pull my arm out? I, I tried. I, but I don't know if his fingers are in my glove or not. I didn't feel it, but... This is obviously not the first time you've been in this position before, right? But does the fact that you've been in this before and then been able to get back here and say that you can do it again, right? You, you've done this before, you can do it again. I, I can do anything I put my mind to. I can fight for another belt. I can go on another street. I can claw and climb and get back to wherever I want to be. It's just... Um, do I want to? That's the question I have to look in the mirror and answer. Do I want to do it again? Do I want to go down that road again? And that answer will come in the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. Just need to let this pass and, and see what's next for me. Um, but if it's in my heart and, and, and that's what I want to do, I'll, I'll be here again fighting for another world. Thank you guys.